this is based on Undo for Lazy Programmers, which is an article by Dennis Gustafsson at Voxagon Lab, uh, you know, the person behind uh, Teardown. Undo usually means maybe you need to have like small commands and those commands tell you like, oh, you you did something in the game editor and this is how to do it. This is how to undo it. And then you have to make all these small commands for it. Or, you have, or the alternative is to have a really nice data model to back things up. However, what Dennis talks about here is that you can instead, whenever you do, do something that you want to be undoable, you serialize the whole state of the currently edited level and whatever other editor state you want to have uh, undo for and you save that on a sort of stack. So let me just show sort of uh, how this works in the game currently. So when I place entities here, I place these three and I press Control Z, uh, every, these are undone and I can redo them again. But what happens here each time I do that is actually that the whole state of the level and also the entity types, which is the totality of all my state, is serialized and put on a stack. And then it just, when I press Ctrl Z, it goes backwards once in the stack and resets the whole uh, editor state to whatever serialized state that one is. This is the same serialized state that I use when I save the level out to disk. Let's look a bit at the code for this. So my serialized state is a serialized level, which is sort of the level, and then it's the entity type definitions. Whenever I then do something, then the function record undo is run. So we have some example here, I think. This is the code that's run when I'm in the tile editing mode, like this one. It checks if the left mouse button is pressed, then it will make a new tile and append that to the list of tiles in the world, sort of. And when it's done all that, appended it, then it says record undo. And if we go to record undo and look what it does, well, the most interesting part is down here. It serializes the whole state. And this thing, this is quite a big function, but this one essentially takes whatever runtime representation I have and uh, it, it make and it makes one of these serialized state things. So when record undo happens, it serializes the state and then it pushes it to the undo stack. So the undo stack lives here and undo stack is just a dynamic array of serialized states. And then there's also an int that says which is our current undo step, which what index are we at in this undo stack. So when you record an undo, it will serialize the state, append it to the undo stack, and then say that the current undo step is the last one in the undo stack. As you know, sort of like when you in Photoshop, you do a couple of brush, brush strokes and then you undo the two most recent ones and then you do a new one. Then the sort of the, the ones that are ahead of you in the undo history, those are removed. And that's what this code does. So if I, you know, if I undo these two and click here, then I, when I undo the, those two that were there are gone which is what you expect. And that's what this one does. It says, if the current undo step is not the index of the last element in the undo stack, then it will remove from the undo stack that last chunk of things. And then at the end, it will do, like I said, do, do this stuff. Some coffee. You don't just record undo, you undo and redo, you know, you do the actual actions. If you press uh, Z while holding left control, it will perform undo. If you press Y instead, it will run perform redo. Perform undo decreases the index of the current undo step by one. And then it fetches the serialized state at that index. And then it deserializes the whole thing. And this deserialized state is what, you know, initializes the whole state of the, the game and the editor and the stuff. And perform redo. Then of course does something similar, just advances and then deserializes. That's essentially it. There is of course some discussion here to be had, like, okay, is this a good idea performance-wise? If you're not building a you know a big game engine for general use where people can build anything, you sort of know what's gonna happen, then doing this is not a bad idea because it is very fast. So uh, this is for my purposes, it's fast enough. And also, you know, since I'm just I'm making my custom editor and everything. I know the sort of limitations of my game. I mean, I've done all different kinds. I've worked on game engines that have the big data model. I've done my own uh, like command based solutions. This is by far the least error prone and the easiest to make version that would work if your game is small enough.